My name is Curtis A. Merriweather Jr. In 2020, I was named the game changer by the White House Policy Advisor for uh, Innovation Entrepreneurship. And I just want to thank you for tuning in. But before I jump into my topic today, I want you to smash that subscribe button, share, and like. Now, today, we're going to discuss the difference between RFP and RFQ. Actually, let's, let's flip it around. RFQ versus RFP. We're going to talk about the RFQ first. Now, what is an RFQ? An RFQ is a request for quote. It's essentially a document that details pricing options for a highly specific product or service. Now, my own prior experience tells me that RFQs are mostly used, not all the time, but mostly used for product buys. I have seen some service buys occasionally, uh, but when the RFQ is used, uh, the details and requirements are very known. Um, the agency will provide product specs or details and the payment terms. And what they're really looking for here is a price. And they wanna be able to compare apples to apples in terms of pricing. So this is probably one of the easiest opportunities to respond to. Now, you'll find your RFQs if you're in the federal uh, government contracting space, uh, any, type, any type of procurement opportunity will be at, under at SAM.gov, that's S-A-M.gov, that's the System for Award Management.gov, uh, that's what SAM stands for. You'll find these under Contract Opportunities on SAM. It's going to be the same for RFPs. So RFQ uh, is a document that details uh, pricing options for a highly specific service or product. And it's typically one of the easier things to respond to. So that's an RFQ a request for quote. Now, let's talk about its, uh, let's talk about the RFP. The RFP is a request for proposal. It's more complicated than an RFQ. They're not just looking at pricing. There's many factors in the decision-making process for the evaluators. They may be looking for a technical approach. Now, some of the names may change based on the RFP, but a lot of the a lot of what I'm going to cover is going to be high level. But look at your proposal carefully and respond. I just want to give you a flavor. So it's going to look for a technical approach. Now, your technical approach, and they may call it something different, but they want to see how your firm plans to address the items outlined in the statement of work. So what is your approach for answering the mail, as they say? So if there's some innovation you want to employ, if there's some discriminators that set your company aside from your peers. So here you're focusing on the creation and the delivery of value based on the statement of work, also called a SOW or a PWS, that's a performance work statement. These are the documents that outline the scope of services expected. Now, the other thing that they may ask for in an RFP is going to be a management volume. It may be sometimes called a business volume, but here they're looking at your management approach. You know, you may want to refer to things like the PMBOK, known as the Program Management Body of Knowledge. I think they're at version seven now. They're going to be asking about your talent recruitment uh, and retention methodology. They ultimately want to figure out how you're going to manage the opportunity. So your program management approach in terms of cost, schedule, uh, scope, as well as quality. So kind of like the major... Uh, focal points for successful program management delivery. Uh, this is where we're going to capture our value. So when I talk about uh, value capture, I'm talking about profitability. Contracts uh, are profitable or not based on the management philosophy employed on the contract. So this, this section is extremely important. Depending on the structure of the RFP, there may be a section for KMP. KMP talks about key management personnel. 
typically they may ask for at least, so they may ask for more, but at least they're going to ask for the program manager. The program manager is going to be your focal point of contact for on, on your side for government interaction. So this is your primary point of contact who's responsible. Maybe some other supporting members, but this is the point of contact that the government's going to reach out to for all uh, program management issues and concerns. Okay. So KMP is your key management personnel. Larger contracts may have a program manager and a deputy program manager. Smaller contracts may be a program manager. If the if the contract's really, really small, program management may have to be uh, co-located with another role. All right, past performance. This is how you demonstrate prior success. So um, whether that is a, a form that your program manager or contracting officer may fill out for you. So someone who's familiar with your with your company's past performance history on their contract. Past performance reference has four main components. It has the period of performance. This is the start date and ending date of the opportunity. The contract can be ongoing. You can use an active contract as past performance. Uh, the contract value of that particular opportunity, the scope of work, and the points of contact so they can actually reach out and have further conversation and dialogue if they choose during their source, they call source selection process. This is when they start looking at the proposals and they're now deciding on which vendors to down select and then of course to make a final award. And if you're doing stuff in the secured space, so you know, say there is a personnel security requirements, you may have a security volume. And the security volume speaks to the management of personal and facility clearances. So you got technical approach, management volume, past performance, and security volume. Now, depending on the agency, they may call these something different. They may even uh, blend a couple of the couple of the uh, volumes together into one. So this can be very important that you read the proposal. Fully. And I, let me let me reiterate, read the proposal fully. Now, this is one of the reasons why I encourage newer companies to uh, to to find work in other ways and uh, not burden themselves with the with the proposal management process at the beginning, because this is the RFP is a more nuanced uh, process. You want to make sure that you're navigating that process uh, appropriately. But that's all I want to share. We talked about RFP versus RFQ. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what's happening and understanding the difference. Now, this is just a primer. By no means the information that I shared today will make you an expert, but it will al allow you at least to be conversational um, when you're talking to the various stakeholders that may be involved in the acquisition process. Thank you for tuning in. Um, go watch some other videos, share, subscribe, and like. And leave me a comment. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again in future videos.